I think a deliberate practice that of relishing or enjoying what we have is so powerful. If we're not enjoying it and we're just waiting for the end result, we're gonna be unhappy. I've got things I do each day and I've got things I do on a weekly basis. I'm less good about the annual vacation. I've never done it. <laughs> it's so hard. I've been doing science 25 years. I, I you know, <laughs> there's a, I, I'm sure uh, some of my uh, former relationships will be like, that's right, we never right. actually took a proper <laughs> vacation. Yeah, my, my former girlfriend and I was like, we'd go to like Paris, England, we, 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 Germany, and I was giving talks yeah, and talks yeah, yeah, and talks, yeah, like, and, then, <laughs> and then I'd get sick, and then one day she was so understanding. It's like, I, I still feel some guilt about that, but wow. we, we would take an afternoon and go to a gallery, but then I was like right back at it. You know, <sighs> That's been my life and too. It, it's hard, I mean, you have to find that balance. You know, and Luckily I was in my 30s then, and when you're in your 20s and 30s, you can get away with less serotonin mm. in your system. But on a but day- now you need more serotonin. Oh, absolutely. So what do you do every day to get more serotonin or so weekly? So sleeping an adequate amount is key. The, the practice that served me the best has not been a meditative practice. There are two practices. One is called yoga nidra, which is doesn't involve any movement. You just, it literally means yoga sleep. This was introduced mm. to me about five years ago. Just laying on your back. You listen to a script. There are a lot of scripts mm -hmm. on YouTube and it teaches you to, there's some breathing involved, but it's really a body scan. You learn to go into deep relaxation. Yes. I do this once or twice a day. If I wake up and I haven't had enough sleep, I do it first thing. Five, 10 minutes. Uh, there's a 20 minute script I mm -hmm. like. There is a 10 minute script that's out there too. I can give you the links to these yeah. if people are interested in them. I have no affiliation with any uh, Yoga Nidra businesses, but I love what the, the practice because I feel like I recover the sleep I didn't get. I then feel really alert. In the afternoon, if I'm feeling tired, I'll do yoga nidra. It also involves some intentions, which has a kind of pseudo self-hypnosis component. And I have a colleague, David Spiegel, in the Department of Psychiatry who does clinical hypnosis. And these intentions that we do in states of deep relaxation are known to have positive effects on thinking and action. They are in pain mitigation and even yeah. breast cancer outcomes. David's work has shown that. So we're not talking about stage hypnosis with like a pendant. We're talking self-hypnosis self -hypnosis or medical hypnosis. Well, it's like you said, deliberate thought as opposed to re reactive thought. Right. And you're, in going, you're teaching your body and brain to go into deep relaxation deliberately. You're doing it. And that's, a, I think, a power you're tool. You're saying, okay, relax, lay down, relax your body, relax your face. Call, you know, breathe slower. You're, you're telling yourself to do it. You're using the body to control the mind. That's again. Mm -hmm. And you're deliberately turning your thoughts off. Most wow. people can't do that. And so for me, Yoga Nidra has been a absolute amplifier, accelerator, whatever you want to call it, on my career and life and well being. It also gets you better at falling asleep because one of the reasons why people have trouble falling asleep is they can't turn their thoughts off. So you're training your nervous system how to do this. I should say, because it sounds a little bit out there in the um, kind of new agey space, there are several studies, imaging studies, positron emission tomography studies, and others looking at yoga nidra specifically. Mm. These, this wasn't worked on by my lab, although we are exploring it in my lab as a tool for stress mitigation, mm. anxiety mitigation. But these studies show that 30 minutes, I believe it was, of yoga nidra resets the levels of dopamine in an area of the brain called the basal ganglia, which prepares the brain and body for action. So these deep relaxation states, even if we're wide awake still, allow the nervous system to reset so that it can get back into action. So for the go-getters, if you're really, if you wanna have a, lo a long career, you wanna high perform your whole career, you want to have tools that allow you to reset that dopamine level because that is accomplished, that, that has a huge effect, excuse me, on buffering adrenaline, as we said earlier. But in addition to that, serotonin is what resets the, the dopamine pathway. So now there's sort of what we're seeing is kind of a logic to it. You need, to mm. al you need to alternate rest and effort. You need to reward effort. You need to understand- With rest. With rest. So there's yoga nidra. And I would say the best time to do it is first thing in the morning, before you go to sleep at night or any time of day. In other words, I believe everyone should have some deep relaxation process yeah. that's deliberate, that doesn't involve ingesting anything, you know, not food or wine drink. or yeah. for some people you know a drink is fine i'm i'm focused on behavioral tools you mm -hmm. know supplements and drugs have their place and you know so there are clinically depressed people that need a boost in dopamine or need a boost in serotonin and i'm i think even though 
drugs like Prozac get a bad rap, th those drugs have also saved millions of lives. There's just an appropriate dose and context and some people shouldn't take them. Well, people right? also, what I'm hearing you say is you can should take them when you need them, when you're unable to physically create those habits for yourself and routines for yourself. But then once you take it, you're always going to need it until you can learn how to behaviorally change your actions. That's right. Right? It's like the obese person that finally, you know, if they really can't move, right? You know, maybe they do need to do some sort of surgical procedure like or they need to, or, yeah. or they need to do something that, but then once they start exercising, you, you, I believe you always want to go behaviors, focus on behaviors first, get the behaviors dialed in. Everything we've talked about today is free. Everything we yeah. talked about is, is self-directed. So it's behaviors. Then I think it, I think diet and is very important or nutrition. I think supplementation definitely has its place. I think we are past the, the ridiculous idea of the 80s and 90s, like, oh, can't you get everything from what you right. eat? No one can even agree on what we're supposed to eat. Right. Every scientist I know who's serious about their mind and body takes supplements. Yeah. I don't have a supplement company, I'm gonna be very clear about this, but they all have their regime for them. Mm -hmm. And I think we're seeing a tide change now where supplements are no longer being thought of as this like niche thing that only bodybuilders and like people who are selling snake oil are about. There is a lot of snake oil out there, but there are also some supplements that are powerful for the sorts of things that we're talking about, for mm -hmm. sleep and all the others. We could talk about them if you like, but I think it's um, behaviors, nutrition, supplements. And then there is a place for prescription drugs. There are people that are clinically depressed and suicidal and need help, and they need to talk to a board certified MD and get a hold of, in some cases, the opinion of whether or not they should take these drugs. Doesn't mean they should take them forever, but you know we tend to jump to drugs, and that's why I think a lot yeah. of those drugs, they won't change your behaviors. You still need to change your behaviors. That's the easy way out to start is taking the drugs, right. but what you should be doing is the behavioral nutrition supplements. If you do those three things first, you should start to feel better. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Sunlight in the morning, the things we've talked about. Breathing, relaxing, yeah, all these things. I have a friend, he's an MD, and he says, uh, it says it beautifully. He says, you know, better living through chemistry still requires better living, yeah. right? There is no pill or substance or psychedelic that's gonna completely rewire you. It's not even clear what that would look like. Right. And then there's a fifth category that's starting to emerge now, which is brain-machine interface. Mm. Things like devices that people put on and to adjust their brain waves, enhance plasticity. There are great devices out there for what I would say reading and measuring from the nervous system, monitoring sleep, for instance, um, monitoring brain waves. We're still in the infancy yeah. of good commercially available brain machine interface, but I think that will eventually show up. The, the other thing, because you asked about tools each day, I have a daily practice of doing yoga nidra um, for me, that's my form of meditation and sort of serotonin reset. The other one is gratitude. I know gratitude gets a lot of discussion nowadays, but I always want to point out it's that gratitude greatest. is, it's not complacency. People think it's navel gazing, and it's, but it, it has been shown to increase levels of serotonin in the brain. It's a science, now it's, I did an interview with um, Dr. It, Lori Santos. Yeah. She's the Yale professor, science of happiness at a Yale. Oh yeah. I had her on. And I was like, okay, what are the top scientific reasons for happiness right now that are proven? And she was like, gratitude is like yeah. one of the top three or four. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so this is not woo-woo anymore. No. She's like, no, this is scientifically proven that gratitude makes you happier. I think gratitude is wonderful. It resets the system yes. so that you can be in pursuit. I think gratitude sounds like complacency and people are like, oh, I don't want to be a navel gazer. I'm just, then I'm not going to be content. Then I'm only, excuse me, then... People fear that they're not going to be, they're gonna be in complacent. Pursuit. They're be like, oh, I'm just happy with where right. I'm at. But serotonin resets dopamine, which puts you back in the fight <laughs> and allows you to fight longer and further. And mm. I, I guess I'm doing this a lot today, but I've had the great um, you know, privilege of doing some work with these communities. If you look at high performers in these very high risk, high consequence special operations communities, they have gratitude practices. Really? They do then they incorporate them. And so, you know, people think there's like some mm. secret sauce or there's something, you know, and they are very unique individuals and very special individuals, but they but they have those practices. They, they have the same them. tools that anyone can use. That's right. We all have these tools. So you do yoga nidra, you do gratitude practice throughout the day, what else do you do? So the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I actually is a gratitude, no matter what pops in my head, I reorient to being grateful that I'm waking up I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, 
I've had a number of close calls in life. I've lost people like everybody. I'm 45, so, you know, seen a lot of babies born, seen a lot mm -hmm. of uh, people die. That's just the way it goes. But just, I express some gratitude for just waking up. Yes. Uh, and that puts me in forward motion. And then I can do things like make my bed, reward that, that I'm not doing something else that, uh, you know, and start mm -hmm. getting into things. And I tend to reward uh, relationships in a big way. Mm. My dog's 10 years old. I raised him wow. since he was a puppy. He's getting to, he's a bulldog. He's probably getting to the end. Wow. I try and really just focus on the sheer pleasure of, of having a yeah. bulldog. They're such characters and yeah. him in particular relationships of all kinds. Like if I spend time with people or just, I just try and think about mentors, people that got me where I, where I am. I do that all the time. And I'm pretty, as you probably imagine, I talk fast, I work a lot, I'm pretty intense, but I finish my days now not feeling ground out and depleted. doesn't mean I'm grateful for every opportunity or everything that comes my way. I have to be conscious of it, but I think a deliberate practice that of relishing or enjoying what we have is so powerful and not just going through the motions. If we're not enjoying it and we're just waiting for the end result, we're going to be unhappy. Well, Absolutely. And there's something called dopamine reward prediction error where people work, 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 or they expect something to be great. And as you do that, you actually raise the level of dopamine that's required to make it feel good when you get there. This is why people, you know, achieve great things and kill themselves. It's crazy. You know, right? the, the failure to respect these neurochemical pathways and these neural pathways the, is actually, I mean, it's, it's basically throwing away everything that we were given, in my opinion. And I don't want to give the impression that people have to follow these protocols because I'm talking about them. We were all given these. You know, people will sometimes ask me, they'll say, you know, is there an app or a product around this? And I just say, look, Mother Nature <laughs> has the patent for this, you know? <laughs> whatever people's beliefs, you know, this yeah. stuff was built into us for whatever reason. And we can use these different neurochemical pathways to organize our life in a way that really serves us and the people around us best. Yeah. And the gratitude practice can be one second long. It can yeah. be 10 minutes if you want. People do love and kindness meditation. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. I've always had a hard time being in meditation for a long period of time. I'm not good at mental visualization. Yeah. Um, so I tend to gear more towards behaviors. Wait, you, you're, a, you're a neuroscientist? You're not good at mental <laughs> visualization? Well, <laughs> well I, you know, I try, but I think some, we all differ in our ability to um, hold on to a ment mental imagery mm -hmm. and mine's kind of fleeting. So I tend to write things out, but yeah, gratitude practice. I get, try and get sun in my eyes. I mean, exercise. I love, I'm fortunate mm -hmm. that I love exercise and training. I think that got into me young. Um, for people that that's harder to do, then, you know, you just build these things up through subjective reward. Yeah. If you want to learn more about how to master your mind, check out this next video right here. We figured out this formula of sustainable motivation mm. in, in this book. But the second question is, go back to why must I use this? Because if you don't have the why, you won't do the what. And finally, when will I use this? Mm -hmm.